Yeah, so we're going to be looking at an image convolution. Um, this is a very common, say, you know, GPU um, application. And yeah, we're going to be applying some optimizations to this uh, image convolution as we go on. So for the first section here, we're just going to learn about image convolutions, what makes them a good problem for solving on a GPU. Uh, and we're going to look at a very naive image convolution. Okay. So um, yeah, again, it's a good problem to solve on a GPU. Um, we can use, we can kind of introduce lots of different hardware features. Uh, we can think about how GPUs work, how memory is loaded, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, also convolution is uh, quite relevant to lots of application developers nowadays, uh, especially if they're involved in uh, developing, say, you know, deep learning applications and that kind of thing, deep neural networks, uh, as well as image processing, which was maybe the original, the original application. So why are image convolutions good on a GPU? So it's an embarrassingly parallel uh, computation. Um, yeah, so every work item can work totally independently of uh, the other work items that are around it. So it's good to, good to apply to your, your parallel architecture uh, being your GPU. Uh, it's a computationally heavy um, algorithm. So it's on the order of, say, your filter squared, um, so your filter squared times the number of pixels, which is usually whatever height by width. Um, so yeah, you, yeah, it's computationally intensive. Um, a large number of operations are performed for each work item in the computation, uh, particularly when using large filters because we're scaling by the, the uh, filter width squared. Um, it also requires a large bandwidth. Yeah, we need a lot of memory in order to compute these and uh, GPUs are, are built to uh, kind of maximize your, your bandwidth uh, from host memory, from, sorry, from, uh, from device global memory to, um, yeah, to your, your uh, compute units. Um, yeah, and then it requires a lot of data as well, yeah. Okay, so yeah, very kind of simply, um, yeah, if we have, uh, so this here is our filter. Okay, we're just going to be multiplying, uh, we're gonna be applying, say, each element to an element in the, in the stencil that we take out of the, the original image. Let this be your, your input image. So we're gonna multiply one by eight, uh, two by one. So one by eight is eight plus two times one is 10 plus four times one is uh, 14, plus two times zero, still 14, plus four times two is 22, and so on. We're gonna divide it all by uh, one over 16, just to kind of normalize it because the sum of these 16, uh, and then that will give us our, our output, okay? So each pixel uh, requires filter width uh, squared pixels um, as, as input. Um, yeah, well, actually times two if we're including the, the blur as well, but this can be calculated numerically. We don't, or it can be kind of, um, we can use say constant memory, that kind of thing. We don't need to be reading this constantly from, from global memory. Okay, um, yeah. Okay, so yeah, so we, we just do an element-wise multiplication and then we, we kind of reduce the, the result into a single value, um, and we we divide across by whatever the weights add up to. So this is a three by three uh, Gaussian blur filter. So we have our input image here, and then essentially we're just smoothing it out, so it just looks blurry. So these are some dogs. These are actually Gordon's dogs. Uh, Gordon, who used to be on my team, uh, and now Gordon's dogs are blurry. Okay, so the data flow, what does the data flow look like? So you have your input image, you're reading this on the host, okay, you're reading it from some .png file or something like that. You copy it to uh, the GPU, so you need to transfer um, this, this image data to the GPU. 
um, this is your input into your image convolution kernel. Okay, so is the filter. The filter also needs to be copied to GPU. If you wanted to avoid this moment copy, you could you could hard code this into your kernel, or you could um, have some you know device function in order to um, in order to calculate this this filter. But uh, yeah, for for this uh, application, we're just copying it. Uh, and you get your output image. Uh, so this is your output image, which is some allocation on the GPU uh, in global memory. And then you need to copy uh, whatever's sitting in that global memory back to host. And then you have your, that'll be, you know, storage disk. Um, yeah, OK. And yeah, so the, the output image, so this is some, you know, allocation on, on the device. It doesn't need to be uh, initialized. So we can use some no init. Uh, sort of accessor if you wanted to, or you could use uh, USM and just not mem copy to it initially. You just need to mem copy back from it at the end. Okay, so yeah, the first, so again, we're gonna use this as a kind of um, an application to iterate over uh, with lots of different optimizations. So the first implementation that we look at is quite na naive. Um, it's not, say highly GPU aware code, but it's quite easy to read and to understand. So we're going to be looking at that um, initially, and we're using this STB image library. Um, so that'll allow us to visualize our results. Uh, the implementation also uses a benchmark function. So this is actually the same benchmark function that Tomai used in the reduction section. And that allows us to uh, just measure the performance, uh, you know, run it say 100 times, 200 times, that kind of thing. Okay, um, yeah, there's a reference image as well, which is just these little dogs, um, and it's 512 by 512 RGBA uh, PNG. So there are four channels of the image. Um, yeah, which is, uh, you'll, you'll see this in the code. And yeah, you can use your own image if you want. Okay. Um, yeah, so because we're using relative paths here, depending on where you run, this your your a dot out from you might get a segmentation fault or something funny happening if you're if it can't find this image uh, so yeah this is just a relative path so it, it depends where you run it from uh, and maybe change where the um, maybe change the source code if you wanted to point to something else <clears throat> okay so we're going to be using this this filter which is um, just a utility function. Uh, this is going to generate your, your Gaussian blur filter or whatever filter type it is, uh, which just has the, the coefficients, which might be one, two, one, two, four, two, that kind of thing. Yeah, feel free to experiment with different variations. This is kind of, yeah, um, yeah you can use whatever filters that you want. Uh, and the filter width should always be an odd value because we want our, the pixel that we're calculating to be in the middle of this, uh, the middle of this filter this kind of stencil. <clears throat> okay, so this is the um, this is the okay performance. So we can see that as we we get the stencil gets larger, uh, the performance gets it, it seems to be going up on a sort of quadratic uh, curve, roughly looks like that. Um, yeah, so obviously in order to com compute this one we need to load 121 and compute on 121 values per per work item this is 81 so it's it's scaling with the with the square of the the filter width okay so i don't really expect that there well if there are any questions please uh let me know but i think we're just going to look at the code look at the source code and just walk through it step by step. Um, before we do that, are there any questions? Okie doke. Okay, so um, is this still visible? Can you still see this? Mm, only the slide. Only the slide, you can't see. Okay, sorry, you can't see my terminal. No. Um, okay, let's do stop share. <coughs> okay, one 
one sec. I keep getting logged out of Perlmutter for some reason, so I'm just going to log back in a minute, Risha. Um, okay. Um, okay, let's there again. Okay, can we see this? Yeah, yeah, I can see now. Cool. Okay, so uh, just going to module load into LVM. Okay, and um, just see this. Yeah, okay, so Sickle LS is telling me that I have a CUDA GPU, which makes me very happy. Um, yeah, an A100. Okay, so now we'll look at the source. Oh no, it should be the solution. Okay, so, so essentially, yeah, we have this in, input image. Yeah. Or actually, no, we'll, we'll start with um, our. Um, filter type okay this is just some uh util filter type okay uh this is just saying we want to blur this is our filter width okay it's odd uh the halo which is the the kind of maybe the you might think of it as the radius of our filter is the integer division of our filter width over two so it means that our pixel will have you know 11 over two um on either side of it uh and you know above and below it um yeah, so in this case, it's five. Okay, this is our input image file. Okay, output image file. Okay, and we're reading this image using some util that we don't need to look into really. Uh, we're allocating some image, okay, for the output. Okay, this is just on the, the host, it seems. Um, and this has input image width. Okay, with input image height as well as the number of channels. So it's able to, so this um, image file uh, has, it has information about the, the number of channels that, you know, has told us, uh, has told us how much we want to um, allocate. Okay, and this, this halo is included. Okay, meaning that our, um, let's see, can I annotate here? Oh, is this, can you see this? Yes. Okay. Sorry, just. I think you will lose you, maybe. Hmm. Yes, it seems frozen from my end too. Yeah. Okay, maybe he will join us again. Hi, sorry. Can you can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear okay. you. Now. Okay, I'm 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 back. Sorry, I, I, the thing crashed. Okay, uh, Amanda, could you make me co-host again so I can share my screen? Okay, sure. Uh, okay, I won't try that again. That was not successful. Okay, um, so I'm going to share screen. Um, let's just type one. Yes. Okay. So, yeah, essentially, you have this allocation uh, of your image. It has this this halo around it. Okay, and this halo is just full of 
Um, I, it's it's probably best, you know, I'm gonna try and do this on a whiteboard. Um, it, it won't, let's see. I'm gonna share it here. So just so we're all on the same page. Um, okay, so you have your image, yeah. Okay. So the allocation, when we allocate it with a halo, it means that not only are we allocating for this image, but we're also adding this padding. We're also adding padding on the edge for a halo. So let's try and be a little bit neat. Okay. So instead of our allocation, our, our image just having um, size, say, um, width by height uh, times the number of channels times the size of T, we instead have halo times two, because uh, this is a halo here. Okay, this is a halo here. So halo times two plus the width. Halo. Okay. Um, times halo times two plus the height. Okay, so this is this is our image. So we have this padding at the beginning of every line. Okay, and this is usually what's uh, defined by the library, but it's usually just filled up with copies of whatever the edge um, pixel might be. Okay, so that pixel might be like that. Okay, that means that all the other pixels on this side are going to be the same. Okay, that's how this this halo is being constructed. Okay. So back to the code. Any questions on that? OK. So the output image doesn't need this, doesn't need this halo. OK. So the, the handy thing about the halo is that we can essentially index into our image and perform our blur without needing to worry if we're at the edge or not. Okay, if we don't use this halo, then we need to do lots of checks to say, oh, to do this blur, we need to make sure that we're not indexing past the end of the image in the left, right, up or down direction. Whereas when we add this halo, uh, you can just indiscriminately do your, do your blur on any pixel that is part of the image. Um, because the, there, there's always going to be, um, say, uh, pixels past the edge pixel. Does that make sense? Take that as a maybe. Okay. Anyway, so yep, we um, construct a queue with the GPU selector. Okay. Um, our image width is this. Uh, image height is that, the number of channels is that, the filter width is that, halo is that, and so on. Um, so our global range is the input image width and the input image height, okay? So our global range is not the same as our, um, as our actual image height because we don't want to have the same parallelism as the, the image with the, with the halo. We just want to have the same parallelism as the individual image. So for each pixel of the individual image, sorry, for each pixel of the, um, the input image, we have a single work item, okay? Uh, your local range, this can be tweaked, okay? Uh, and then your ND range is this, your global range with your local range. Okay, um, so again, here is our in-buff range. So we have an input image height plus the halo times two, okay? As well as the input image width plus the halo times two, and then it's multiplied by the sickle range, uh, one comma channels. So when you, so bear in mind that this is a, this is a two dimensional range. Yeah, and when you multiply a two dimensional range or say an n dimensional range by an n dimensional range, it's element wise um, multiplication. If you have some operation with, with an n dimensional range, it's always element wise. Okay, and the output, out buff range is just gonna be, uh, the same thing, but without the halo on, the, on both sides. Okay, so yeah, we're going to 
so and then the filter range is just the filter width um so this is by uh yeah so this is actually kind of neat so because this is a there's a scalar value then this is equivalent to multiplying it by filter width filter width uh, a two-dimensional two-dimensional range okay so uh we have our input buffer which is our sickle buffer uh, input image data so that includes the halo okay our buff so we need to where this isn't referring to any host uh data okay we can just see that it's it's constructed with a range okay so we need to use a set final data um member function to say that when this buffer is destructed when it's destroyed uh, we wanted to write its data, the data that it's managing, into the output image, which is host data. Okay, we have some accessors here. So we've read only, I, write only. Yes. Can I ask a question? Yes, yes. yes. Just curious, why are you using this set final data and not uh, with uh, directly passing the output image buffer? Uh, um, you you def you definitely could. So. You definitely could. Um, it's the difference between essentially using a no init accessor um, and using this this API. So if you use a no init accessor, then it knows not to do the uh, initial mem copy to the device um, and only to do the the mem copy back. I think this example is just kind of showing some of the APIs that um, Sickle has to offer. I, see. Um, I think other other exercises use set final data uh, as well as no in it um accessories and that kind of thing so i think this is just building on 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 that uh, not okay. not sections that we've done today now yeah perfect thank you very much yeah um yeah so yeah so instead of doing this we could have actually just done um as Toma mentions just output image dot data Okay, and then we actually wouldn't have needed, um, uh, or no, we would still have needed the dimensionality because this is actually a, this is a one-dimensional. Yeah, so maybe that's a or no, no, it should be fine. It should be fine. No, the input input range is is two-dimensional as well. Yeah, that should be fine. Um, so yeah, we sh we would also be able to do that, but um, for and then using a, a no in it. Um, accessor here just to say please do not uh mem copy to this to this allocation uh on device uh before you're you're writing into it um yes yeah, so there there in sickle there are lots of ways to do kind of the same thing which is a good thing um okay so now the actual kernel Okay, so we get our global ID. Yeah. Now, for some fishy reason, we swap the um, the Y and the and the X indices of the global ID. Okay, so this is maybe a hint of what we're going to be doing in the next section. This seems fishy. Why is it fishy? We're going to look at that in the next section. Uh, the channel stride is just a single range one channels. Okay. Uh, Halo offset is um, so in order to index into the into pixel zero of our image, we need to get over. We need to essentially index away from this um, this kind of halo padding that our image library has created. Okay, so this is our halo offset to get into our image. Okay, our uh, source uh, is going to be so this is our source pointer. Um, so no, it's not a source pointer. Okay, so it's going to be global ID. So it's this is just your your offset um, for your your global pointer. So it's going to be the global ID plus the halo offset. Okay, so my individual global ID. I'm going to uh, remember this is two dimensional. Okay, I'm going to in, uh, offset that by the halo. So if I'm to um, I'm going to share my other screen very quickly. Um, so let's just say that my um, I am work item. So this this is the dimensionality of your kernel. Okay, your your execution um, your your execution space, your your iteration space is going to be this size. But the problem is it 
if we're to start that index at zero, it's actually going to look something more like this. Okay, it's going to be here. If you're to map this directly onto your your data, it's going to fit exactly like that. Okay, so we need to offset it uh, using this. Okay, we need to offset it into this rectangle. Okay, so it goes where it should. Okay, so that if I am say work item, you know, uh, work item K zero or K K K J, um, that I am not indexing into the halo. Instead, when I index into the global buffer, I'm indexing into the the image. Okay. Um, share my other screen. Okay, and we need to um, we need to worry about the the channel stride as well, which is just saying that this is an RGBA, so there are, there are uh, four channels to this. Um, so each pixel is is four times whatever your data type is, which I think is float here. Um, okay, so your your dest um, your dest say uh, offset um, the the index that you're 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 indexing into in in your output buffer is just going to be the global ID by the channel stride. You don't need to worry about this halo. Um, yeah. Okay. So these are going to be for kind of temporary uh, values. Okay. Um, yeah, so we're going to be accumulating into these, okay? Uh, accumulating values into these. Can anyone tell me what kind of memory in your GPU will be used for this? I know we haven't covered this today, but for experienced GPU programmers, um, you, you, should, you should be familiar with this. What kind of memory uh, are we using here? Private. Right. Memory? Yeah, exactly, exactly, private memory. Yeah, so why would we want to accumulate into private memory instead of, say, making a, a buffer for this, this, this kind of thread local accumulation? Each work item has your own some ver variable? Yes, yes. What what about um, let's say speed of access? How does private memory rank versus say local memory or or global yeah. memory? Yeah, it's much faster. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It's a lot faster. Okay, so we want to always use the fastest memory that we can. Um, yeah, thank you very much. Um, yeah. Okay. So now, uh, so yeah, this is. In private memory, this in register is super, super fast. Uh, we want to use this if possible. We don't need to share this with any other work items, so that's fine. Um, now we're going to do a two-dimensional kind of indexing through our, our filter, okay? So it's filter width, filter width, okay? Um, so now we are, so we know that our center, this, this, the center pixel is going to be source zero, uh, source one, that's the coordinates. Yeah, and now we need to just index through this, uh, starting on the left hand side of the the filter, the the top left of the filter, and going through the entire um, going through the entire uh, filter. Okay, and for each of these, we're going to be uh, we're going to be so this is just the number of channels. Okay, so um, yes, is this is this clear? So again, sorry, we're we're multiplying the input accessor by the filter accessor. But the most difficult thing really is is the indexing. This is um, it can be tricky. Maybe another way of thinking about this is instead of doing r is equal to zero, you do r is equal to minus halo. R is less than uh hello and then we just do uh r okay and similarly we can have c here so we're indexing from the the left hand side of the halo to the right hand side of the halo or the up side to the down side okay and then that's c Okay, 
Yeah, that looks okay. Okay. Um, and then you calculate your filter offset, which is just, yeah, you're just finding where in the filter am I at the moment. And then you use these different things to, um, to uh, the, the channel offset as well is just saying which part of the RGBA am I in? Am I in the R, the G, the B, the A? And this is calculated here. Okay, does anyone have any questions about this? Okay, great. Um, yeah, and then once you've done that, you write the answer into, so you're writing this, this temporary um, kind of private variable. Okay, so my into uh, your output accessor. Okay, and we trust that's going in the right place. Okay, and then at the end, yeah, we just write the image. Okay, so let's have a look. Solution. Does CP. Now I'm going to need some includes. So external uh, catch to single include. Okay. Um, utilities. Uh, I think we need STB. Uh, is that there? No. Okay. Maybe include. Okay. Um, dash I. External. Wait, sorry. Okay. Uh, SCB. I think that should be okay. Okay, so it's compiling a little bit slowly. Okay, and there we go. Okay, now I have this batch script. Okay, so I'm just going to do s batch, uh, batch, oh, sh. Okay, and then uh, I think that slurms from earlier. Okay, so cache slurm nine seven one one one. Okay, so that's the speed that it's happened at. 